Now, let's just immediately go to the donut, okay? Because I think you've got that down. And so the donut was the next example. So let me show you. This is kind of what Bucky's been trying to tell us. All right? He says, Bucky says, I'm going to create a class, okay? And that's going to be the main class that's going to call everything in. That's what he's been trying to do. And it's got this void method that's going to run everything. But uh, I'm going to have a second class that I'm going to need with all the information in it, okay? Now, if you look at this class right here, you see there's not a main method in this class. It's just uh, got the, in a sense, the methods I'm going to need to run my program, the class that I need to call into Donut to make it do its stuff. All right, so anyways, so, so the next thing we're going to look at is basically, let me go back to this program, is we want to look at the Donut. Ta-da! Because that's a real program. And I'm actually not going to go through all the details of the donut, but I want to make sure you understand how it fits together. And so you can see already we've mentioned that graphics G um, element right there, okay? And so what that graphics G element is going to do is actually going to uh, create this whole scenario for us. Uh, but there's a twist here, and this is now you see graphics 2D. What is that? Graphics 2D is a method that was created that basically is kind of an upgrade of graphics, all right? Graphic 2D allows you to do a lot more stuff, has, gives you a lot more control over the original graphics class. So if you go up to my imports right here, you see that there is a graphics, kind of a graphics 1, right? And there's a graphics 2D. So there's a graphics and a graphics 2D. And that graphics 2D is, is more powerful than graphics, but, but basically it's written upon the graphics class. So I've called that in. And I start doing all this stuff. And if you go through the write-up, it explains how all this works. But what I want you to get right here, how is one fits into another. This is my what? This is my board, right? Okay, that's my board. Got that? And then what the other one is, it's my what? It's the program that calls the board in. Right? And that is like my skeleton in a sense. We're going we're gonna to call that donut. Is going to extend the J frame and is going to add the board and then it's going to set all the parameters for the board and run it in the void main strings args method using new donut. So, very e e easy scenario. And this is now you're starting to see the, the whole thing that you were getting confused on at the beginning why it's useful now. As these programs begin to grow, you definitely want to modulize them so you can use them over and over, not try to string them all together in one long program. And once again, just a note, in the boards, it's being using the J panel. And that J panel, of course, extends boards. So the boards is a J panel itself because it inherits all those classes and methods. And that it goes right into the uh, file that calls it. Now let me bring up Eclipse real quick here. And I'm actually going to run this. So I'm going to click on board, excuse me, on donut and run that. And that's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, that's a, a wonderful example of how powerful these drawing methods are. I mean, you've seen a lot of basic stuff now, but that's, that's pretty cool. Any questions about that? I mentioned, you mentioned that you had a question about the donut, so go ahead and ask it now. Okay. So the donut was done, and then we move down a little bit more, and he's going to put an image in there. And so this starts to get interesting, because this is obviously something you're going to be doing when you build programs. And so we're going to, when you create computer games, of course you need graphics, and they're going to create a package in the in the folder called what a bar job is that what it is? I don't know what that is, but uh, I I I created one. I called it my dog. I just went and grabbed the image off the web. And so once again, you're going to see these graphic components, Graphics 2 and Graphics 2D. You're going to need to see some new stuff. We're going to be working with images. And specifically, the image icon is the swing that you're going to need, the swing package you need. And that's going to allow you to take the image from memory and put it into like an, an image icon. And then you can manipulate that image. Now, we're going to do more with this, but this is the beginning. And once again, you know you're going to need your J panel. And so you want to put your J panel in there. And he's building his board right now. And so, you know, you have to look at this code, and after you look at it long enough, you think you understand it. So he's going to create an image class called, the name of what he want to call his image. He's going to create his board uh, method. He's going to say, hey, let's, my in image icon be called II. Let's declare a new image icon. And this is just basically the mechanism you have to do it with. This dot get class dot get resource, and that's the name of the image. So that has to go at the root level where your program is. Now what I'm going to show you is how to put it in a folder beneath that because you're typically not going to have all your images with the root level of your program. Okay, so I'll show you how to clean that up a little bit. 
And then what he's going to do is he's actually going to do a little bit of mechanisms where he actually paints the image itself to uh, what's called G2D. Okay. So what he's doing is creating this paint method. He's just throwing the image right into it. Okay. Using uh, this right here. So let's actually go to the Eclipse program and take a look at this. Now below that, of course, once he's got his board made, he's got to do the same thing he did before. And you could just copy the code previously, right? And just call all this stuff and set the title. And then, uh, you know, instantiate the, uh, the constructor file. There you go. And let's go ahead and take a look at the Eclipse code real quick. Okay, here we go real quick, real quick here. Um, and this was called uh, my image is what I called it. And I used a dog. So in this case, I've got the dog image right here at the root level of the main program, which is my image. And the board is all the code we talked about earlier. And if you see something, I don't know what all these variables are. Just remember, in Eclipse, just roll over it, right? And wait for the code hinting. Ta-da, come on, code hinting. There it is. Hit F2 to get the code hitting up. And then you actually can look at that and go, well, what does that all that mean? Well, I, oh, I see. Uh, the first part is actually going to be the image name, I guess. And that's one I've declared it as. That's this name right here. Okay. Second will be the X position, the Y position, and then uh, I guess an image observer. And it's just null for this particular case. And so that draws the image uh, to the J panel. Okay. And then now I need to bring that J panel into my program, which I do in the next part, and it draws it to the screen. So let me go ahead and run the program. And there's my dog when she was a puppy. Little white lab. Okay, so there you have it. And uh, But I don't like that because I know my images are not going to be in. So I want to change all the folder structure, okay? So I'm going to come along here and I'm going to create an image folder. Now I do it later on when I work with the star method. But let's just go ahead and just create an image folder here. I'll go ahead and new. And you're going to want to do this as you start building your projects and start organizing everything in folders. It makes it more modular and it's the way everyone does it. So my images folder, so I'm going to throw the dog in there. Now notice that it did not change everything because it's not a class. I didn't know what to do with that asset. So I have to go to my program, okay, the board program. And I got so many things open I need to close everything else and bring it back up. And I need to change that reference. And I call that folder what? Images? Are you listening? So I need to put images slash my dog. That is the, the direction to the file. All right. Because the main program is in my image, so I don't have to type that again. But I created a folder, images folder in my image that it, I have put the uh, that I put the icon in. Alright, and so you can see the icon right there. So that will pull the icon in. Alright, so if I run the program now I should see uh, go back to image, bring that in. If I did everything right. Alright, there's my lab. Oh, that's behind the screen. Great. There's my dog. Oh. Alright, hold on. There she is. Alright, good. Alright, so that's fine, but that's not good enough for me because that once again, what do I have? I have this uh, image, I have this board, which I really don't want it there because. I actually want it what somewhere else. So we'll create a new folder, and we'll call it. Um, we could call it. Um, uh, w uh, we'll just call it uh, board. Okay. And then I'm just going to drop my uh, uh, board into it. Hit OK. And it's changing all the references for me automatically, and it's actually going to import it for me as well if it did what it's supposed to do. Yeah, absolutely. And you see right here that I've got a little bit of an issue here. It actually also imported the skeleton. I don't want that because that was from a previous program, so I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, but it did import for me, you see that? The board right there. Okay. So you could actually have that folder anywhere, hidden deep within your other program files. And that's what a lot of people do sometimes, is they try to hide uh, 
sensitive information in other folders. Not right at the root level. 